Hey YouTube. Do this really quick. There you are. Yep. Today we're doing a little quick review on the Smith & Wesson Model 10. In this particular case, the 8th version of it. And tell you what I think about this gun. I changed the grips on it from the uh, quick view because these look a lot nicer, but I prefer shooting with <clears throat> these are a lot more comfortable because these are not the most comfortable grips in the world. But they look a lot nicer for the camera, so I put those back on. The Smith & Wesson Model 10 shoots 38 special revolver cartridges, although there's probably some semi autos that shoot 38 special that I'm not aware of at the moment. It's a single action, double action revolver. The iron sights, uh, sorry about that. I have to turn the camera sideways to get a little bit better view. They're not adjustable and kind of small, so what you see is what you get. No adjustments at all. Which is fine with me because you can't really break them. Especially if you decide to carry this thing like a lot of American law enforcement did throughout the 20th century. And I'm pretty certain this is an example of a former cop gun, judging by the wear on the barrel fry from holster wear, along with all oh, the checkering right here is worn off, probably from scraping up against things. Once on the right side of the police officer's belt. Bought this particular revolver mostly because I just wanted an inexpensive 38 revolver to take to the range, and this particular revolver always somehow manages to end up in my range bag every time I go, no matter what, as long as I have 38 special around. Mostly because I find it to be an enjoyable little shooter, and I like shooting revolvers, and for some reason I shoot revolvers a little bit better than semi max I'm not really sure why, just happens to be the case for me anyway, and that's the kind of hang I grew up shooting with revolvers, so I guess I'm gonna revolvers, so I don't know. But uh, uh I'll turn over so you can look at the other side a little bit more. It's like the big Smith and Wesson logo. Oh by the way, I forgot to mention no key lock. So you don't have to have that stupid little lock that newer Smith and Wessons have where you have to turn a little key and deactivates the gun and it looks really ugly and no one uses them except probably people in a couple band states might use them but I don't know anyone that personally it does but if that means anything to you it's not there but supposedly Smith, Smith ones still makes a Model 10 but I'm not 100% sure I've not seen one but I could be wrong though they probably make, if they do make they probably make them with the ball barrel and I kind of like the older skinny barrel Smith & Wessons, but it does help keep down recoil a little bit, but 38 Special is not exactly a heavy recoiling cartridge. Especially, you, know, you can look pretty light, almost like, because you're almost shooting a 22 sometimes. Uh, let's see, look at the trigger. It's serrated for this particular version, so you get an Pretty nice grip on it. The hammer is a little bit thinner than I like, but it works. I do like the cylinder release. I like it more than the newer ones. The newer ones, are, for me, just don't work too well for me, but it's a personal preference, So, you, and you can also change it if you want to. Just like I would change the grip, for instance. And uh, some people paint this, so I haven't painted the one on this one, but I might someday, I don't know. But mostly it's just a range gun, so it's not really like a huge deal to change up too much. And also for those of you who know, like the older Smith & Wessons, they screw the, pair, the barrel in and pin it. And so the newer ones were, they, well for a while they crushed them after they put the barrel in. The newer ones, they it's like a sleeve that goes around the barrel and the barrel's inside and you can take the barrel out. It's a little bit easier to change the barrels, but it's not as, I guess you would say, a 
nicer quality or higher touch to them compared to the old Smith and Wessons. But uh, would I recommend buying one of these? Uh, yeah, if you can find them, they're, I mean, they're not that expensive. I think they're usually run about three fifty to four hundred dollars if you were depending where you look. And most of them are usually ex-police guns, like this one probably is. <clears throat> I mean, they look pretty beat up, but the mechanics on them are usually pretty good. Like, you know, I'll let you look at the inside a little bit more. I mean, the internals are usually all right. They're not too super beat up. Mostly, it's just like most police guns, just carried a lot and shot little. <laughs> but yeah, it's just a. Plain old 38 caliber revolver is not much to speak about. But it is fun to shoot. But uh, thanks for sticking around and watching my terrible video, and hope to see you again soon.